DMVR Buffs Live. This is an emergency podcast. We are presented by the American <laughs> Raptors. <laughs> Carl Durrell has been fired, gentlemen. Who wants to go first? Sound Ryan? the alarms. Yeah, you know, first of all, I think this is a move that had to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a, you just can't get embarrassed five straight times to start the season and keep your job. But at the same time, I want to say credit to the people in charge up there. Like, it would have been very easy for them to cry poor and say, we can't do this. And honestly, you know, as recently as three weeks ago, that's what I thought was going to happen is they're just going to say, look, we're not in a position to, to make this type of move. We don't have that type of money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it helps that the games just continued to be embarrassments after that, where I think, you know, you get some of the boosters and some of those people to come through and say, Hey, I can't watch this anymore. So like, what do I need to do to make this happen? But I do think it's important to say like, good job. You got, you you had to do it, but you did it and you didn't, you know, make a bunch of excuses as to why you couldn't. Yeah, totally. I mean, it was obvious that it needed to happen and you lose this many games as badly as they have. That's, I mean, it's it's a historically bad start to a college football season, and there have been a lot of teams playing for a lot of seasons in college football. <laughs> yep. Uh, you know, feel feel for Carl a little. You know, he obviously wanted to come here and turn the program around and live here the rest of his life and all that sort of stuff, and that didn't work out. At the same time, though, wind up pulling in twelve million dollars more than or, that. Or so <laughs> yeah, I can't. I don't know what the total would be. Probably maybe fifteen. Can't feel too bad. Yep. No. And this is something we talked about on the Wednesday show before this Arizona game. The spread was 17 and a half, but if it got up into the 20 plus, which it eventually got up to, mm-hmm. Carl Durrell is definitely going to be on the radar to be fired just with the bye week coming up. I mean, this mm-hmm. was the time yep. to do it in season. Um, where do we go from here then, guys? Who do we look at for potential interim head coaches? Is this team better? Um, I'll let Henry speak to the interim head coach um, in a second here. But I just, I, I got to say, like, this next hire is far and away the most important hire in the history of Colorado football. It's not even close. Mm. Because of the way that the college football landscape is set up right now, you have to be absolutely positively desperate for relevance and relevance soon. So while you're – that's a big ask because Carl Durrell is leaving the cupboard not completely bare but certainly not stocked. Um, It is so important for this team to be relevant nationally and do so in about the next two years, that this mm-hmm. this hire is essentially your last chance. And I think it's one of the reasons why that they, they made this kind of desperation move, which doesn't help the football team this year, mm-hmm. but it gets them in the front seat of this next coaching cycle to where you have to nail this hire. And if you do, you have a chance to be in whatever the next phase of college football is. We know it's going to be different. Um, so to me, this is, this is it. Like, this is your last last chance at being uh you know in the club totally i mean you know we, we've talked before it's really hard to get kicked out of a conference like that is so rare it's happened maybe once or twice ever you don't have to worry about that part you can stick in the pac-12 but the big question is will the pac-12 even exist like well are oregon and washington about to bolt are utah or arizona or whoever about to bolt and you just want to make sure that you are in position to either jump with everybody else because this is one of those rare situations where you know Pac-12 teams right now there is not nearly as much security as there has been in the past. Right, and as you're saying, Hank, with conference realignment coming up, Owen McCown is a true freshman now. There's a lot of variables in play for this football team for not just the distant future, but the very near future, the immediate future. Next season, who are we looking at for interim head coach? So, I mean, Darian Hagan's on staff. You got Phil McGagan, too. Who I'd would be, you think? I'd be shocked if it's not Phil McGagan. I, I would be very shocked. Um, we'll see how it plays out. But maybe you look at, like, Mike Sanford and consider him just because he's a, a, the offensive coordinator. He has head coaching experience. But I do think that this is Phil McGagan's opportunity. Um, and I guess you should say, you know, wide receivers coach, associate head coach. Um, has a bunch of NFL experience, super high energy, seems like he'd be a good recruiter, but hasn't spent much time in college football, Mm -hmm. so who knows. Um, But yeah, I would be very, very surprised if it's not Phil McGagan. This is where things get a little messy because doing this with seven games left in the season, like I said a second ago, it, it really doesn't help the football team this year unless the vibes are just an absolute disaster, which I'm sure they are. 
And so that's the one thing that can be helped by this is the vibes. Um, now, is that going to help them win football games? I really don't think so. But you, all you just did was take not just one, but two coaches off of a staff yes. that is not having success. So now all that happens is the work that all the, that those two guys were doing just gets spread out mm -hmm. to everyone else. So all that's happening is everyone here has to do more work. Whoever they decide to do, whoever they decide to choose for this, kind of has to be a someone like a McGagan or a Darian Hagan could make sense because what you want to do is take someone who has who doesn't have all that much on their plate right now. Now everyone has a lot on their plate, but coordinators, it's very difficult. Um, because they have a whole thing going. And then if you add another thing to it, uh, it's going to create a mess. Like the offense is already enough of a mess. You don't need to distract Mike, Stan Mike Stanford even more. So right. McGagan, Hagan, um, that's where you look because it's like, okay, they have a position and they're, and they're the head coach, which is often you know what teams do in college, um, at least in some ways. So I, I'd... I think you're on, you're on the right track there, but Hagen, you can at least pull, you know, you can do the whole like legend glory days. Yeah, that's true. You could try to like play that card. It's never worked mm -hmm. here, uh, but it's, it's an option. Well, with half the season left, I guess, I mean, what do you have to lose? Yeah. Um, you touched on the other part of this though too, Ryan. Uh, Chris Wilson also out as defensive coordinator after giving up nearly mm -hmm. 700 yards against Arizona last night. Uh, this defense, I mean, I don't know if a coaching change is exactly going to fix the problems on this defense right now. Uh, I guess what can we expect from them moving forward? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, this isn't – I really don't think this is a Chris Wilson problem. Yeah. Um, Chris Wilson is as proven of a football coach as anyone on that entire staff. So, again, removing him from the equation – on the surface, on paper, does not help you. Mm -hmm. um, now, who knows? Maybe the players decided they didn't like him this year and they're not playing as hard for him. I, I don't know enough to answer that question. But I don't expect really anything other than maybe a one-game boost where it's like, hey, you know, all these things are new and all these things are changed. Like, let's go show everyone that things are different. Mm -hmm. Maybe you get that one-game boost. But I, I, I really don't. Like, I expect this to be one of the worst defenses in the country for the next seven games. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, because, I mean, last year, everybody was in love with Chris Wilson. Yep. You know, the, the scheme that he put together to utilize all the talent that he had, now it's like there's no talent. Obviously, everything has to go wrong, though. It has to be bad coaching to get to almost 700 yards. But I agree. I don't think you're really upgrading that position, but I am curious to see who takes over. You know, Mark Smith, the inside yeah. linebackers coach, I think he might be toward the top of the list. Brett Maxey, safeties coach, he's very very experienced i think those are the two that that jump off the page mm -hmm. um let's talk about owen mccown here because i think that's a big aspect of this whole situation now we talked about it on wednesday when we were talking about durrell and his job that's one of the reasons owen mccown came to colorado mm -hmm. uh carl durrell coached josh mccown when he was in the nfl um of course owen now at colorado is this a cause for concern for maybe owen's future as a buff Potentially. I mean, anytime there's a coaching change, all bets are off. Who's going to stay? Who's going to come in? Could you get a, tra you know, like CSU pulls the Nevada coach and then just takes the entire team from Nevada. Yep. Um, like things like that can happen. So you have no idea what it's going to look like. Um, maybe the new coach has, you know, a certain scheme that Owen McCown doesn't want to play in. Like all of that stuff is on the table. But for me, this is, this is a good opportunity for me to talk about what is the number one thing you're looking for in your next coach. And it's recruiting mm -hmm. so far above yeah. everything else. Way down here is anything football related. I truly believe this. I'm with um, you. And Bill McCartney himself will tell you, I was a crappy football coach. I knew how to recruit and I hired good coordinators. Yeah. That is the, that's the formula. Uh, and it's especially the formula in, in the current landscape. So whoever comes in better be a smooth talking, mm -hmm. you know, uh, young, fresh, understands NIL, wants to bend the rules, uh, all that stuff. And hopefully they come in and they, you know, they're able to sell Owen McCown the same pitch that they're going to have to go around the country selling. Uh, and he wants to stay. And if not, this person better, like, regardless, this person better be able to re recruit someone better than Owen McCown mm -hmm. because he's not going to be here for forever either way. So uh, the Owen McCown thing is big, but it really just comes down to 
you got to hire someone who can recruit their ass off. And, and job number one is probably Owen McCown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, if you lose Owen McCown, it is what it is. Quarterbacks come and go. You know, it's tough, especially because the quarterback situation has been so disgusting in Boulder for a couple years now. For many years. Yeah. And it's like Owen McCown, could he be your, your next Steven Montez? Absolutely. And I think there's potentially he's even better. But as much as you're excited to see everything that he's doing and excited about the future with him, if you if you miss out, you go to the portal and right. who knows who you find, who knows if he's as good, but there's at least options there. So it's not like a do or die. You have to keep him. Um, although, obviously, you, you want to keep him and you want to keep a couple of these guys. But I think you just look to Jed Fish in Arizona. He turned things around so quickly. He, he right. brought in the quarterback from Washington State. He brought in a whole bunch of other transfers, and all of a sudden they just immediately had enough talent to to compete in the Pac-12. And if if the Buffs are competing in the Pac-12 next year, people are going to be thrilled. Yes. Well, and then if you can look at it from this aspect too, at what Lincoln Riley and USC did bringing in Caleb Williams, it's mm-hmm. entirely possible that the Buffs coach, the next head coach of the Buffs, is coaching another team. And their next quarterback is with that coach on another yes. team right now. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, I mean, there's so much. It is, it's only October now. There's so much that needs to unfold over these next two, three months. Uh, I guess how quick do you think the Buffs should act in hiring a guy? Take your time, but yep. not too much. Um, you know, who it's it's to be seen if Rick George is even going to be the one making this right. hire. You know, the way, by firing Carl now, you can evaluate whether you want Rick George making the next hire. I, I said this on Twitter last night. This is not my endorsement of Rick George, but it is. He made one hire that was a true legitimate hire. And by all accounts, until you know Michigan State started losing this year, that was a hire that he knocked out of the park mm-hmm. in Mel Tucker. Then Mel you know, absolutely screws him over at the last minute and puts him in a terrible position where he made a terrible hire and gave him a terrible contract. And so is that contract and that hire a fireable offense? Probably, Mm -hmm. probably. But I will say, I trust Rick George to know what the next football coach has to look like. Mm -hmm. And if you fire him, I just have no idea who it is. You know, essentially, it would be the the new president of CU who's going to be in charge of hiring the next athletic director. I obviously have no evidence to trust him to make that hire. And then I have to trust the next athletic director to make the Like, there's a lot of steps there. I personally believe that if Rick George makes this hire... He knows. He knows the NIL stuff. He knows yeah. the young stuff. He knows what it, he at least knows what that person has to look like. And so, I would probably take that than full roll of the dice of all of those things I just mentioned. Um, I guess I want to ask you guys this: Would you rather go down the retread road of like a experienced coach who has you know a, a little bit of flash to their name, has had success in the past, or Full on, up and comer, roll the dice and hope you you know you hit a jackpot. I honestly don't care. Like it just depends on who it is in particular. Like it could be either way. Um, and, and part of that is, like Colorado is not for most coaches a dream job at this point. Uh, you know, it's they've struggled for so long. They've had the issues recruiting. Like they're so down right now. On top of that. It's you make good money being the coach, but it's not the same money that the other power five schools are offering. And because of that, I'm not, I don't think you're, you brought up Lincoln Riley. Like you're not getting Lincoln Riley, obviously. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so is when you have to kind of cut off the top 10% of, of candidates just because they probably aren't going to be that interested. To me, that's why everything opens up and you just kind of have to see who each one is individually and whatever happens, happens. I'll answer your question, Ryan. Silver Buff is saying in the comments that ESPN says Sanford is going to be the interim head coach of this football team. I don't um, like that. Yeah, interesting aspect there. But to answer your question, the Buffs just got to get the best football coach that they can, um, either if they're experienced or if they're a new young hotshot. Um, you just got to find a guy that really fits in, is willing to build something here too. And I think that's something that Rick George and this program have to offer to this head coach is that this is going to be your program. We're trusting you not only for these next couple of years, but you know, hopefully someone for the long term to really start to finally build something and build some momentum for this program as we head towards realignment. Yeah, I think just based off of the way these last two went, right? You hire Mel Tucker, that was a little bit of more of a gamble. 
you definitely felt a lot better about that hire than Carl Durrell, who had had, you know, some success Mm -hmm. as a head coach. I think just based on the way these things normally go, if Rick George were to make the hire, and pretty much regardless, I think they end up going back to the well of some coordinator and obviously over the next few weeks. And Mm -hmm. the good thing is we probably have the rest of the season at least gives us something yep. to talk about every single week is who's the who's the yeah. newest latest name um we'll look, we'll kind of start uncovering those exciting coordinators all over the country but that's where i would guess this ends up yeah Me too plenty of content we're going to get to especially throughout this week's bye week do you guys have any closing remarks before we head out again good job you know yep. mm-hmm. it, you did what you had to do and and everyone knew you had to do it um but they did it, and they did it swiftly, and I think that's a, at least a small step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. I mean, it at least you know that the page is turning. You know, this the rest of the season is still probably going to be pretty painful to watch, especially because you know that last month of the season they're playing only ranked opponents, and that's when you think, who knows, maybe the offense can finally get something clicking by then. Like this is going to be a really painful stretch. But at least you know that next year could be different. And and this offseason will be a lot more fun. Also, interim coach has a decision to make about Owen McCown, especially yeah. going into those uh, those games. Yeah, like, that red shirt's going to come in. Yeah. Are they someone who wants to set up the future? Mm-hmm. Um, or you know, is there a, a, a line of command from up top that says, hey, we want our next coach. We want to be able, be able to tell them you've got this young kid for the next four years. Yeah. I, I Three years is plenty. Mm-hmm. Three I years agree. is plenty. I'm Better not worried about a red shirt. In three years. Yeah, I'm not worried about a red shirt. All right, plenty of content we'll get to, guys. Keep it tuned in here at DMVR Buffs. We will be back throughout the week. Plenty of content uh, coming your way. Until then, guys, Sco Buffs. Sco Buffs.